back to, to the public health aspect yes. of conservation, what are the other communicable or transmittable diseases between humans and, and great apes, for example? There's a range of them. Um, polio is one. It actually occurred in chimps in Gombe National Park as early as, as the 60s. Right, where Jane Goodall did her pioneering yes, studies. Yes, where Dr. Jane Goodall did her studies. And of course, it was suspected to come from the fishermen or the, the people using the same water as the chimps. Um, we've had uh, respiratory diseases. In Rwanda, they, there was a measles outbreak within a gorilla group. Um, this was actually in the 80s. There was measles, a suspected measles outbreak. And they ended up vaccinating very many gorillas. 80 gorillas were vaccinated. And they got better, but they weren't sure whether it was because of the vaccine or they were going to get better anyway. But that was a big... It, was, it happened at around the same time that there was a measles outbreak in the local community. Interesting. Yeah. And more recently, um, two gorillas died in Rwanda, like a few years ago. And when they did the post-mortem and they did all the DNA and genetics, because diagnostics has improved over time. So this time they were able to actually to do, to prove. Um, they found there was a human metanema virus, which, and a strain, not only did they find out what the disease was, but they found out where it came from. They were able to find out that it came from South Africa. So very important in terms of um, identifying the source and the host and, and transmission of these diseases. Yes, because actually then everybody thought it probably came from tourism, because obviously a local community, it came from, the fact that the strain was from South Africa, likely a tourist who came from South Africa who came to track the gorillas. And so yeah, it's, diagnostics is improving, so that's really helping us to be better prepared for preventing disease transmission. Okay. What are, what are some of the key challenges you face in addressing conservation issues while also looking at public health issues and um, interacting with communities that live in and around wildlife protected areas? Um, some of the challenges that we face, uh, a lot of them, well, fundraising is a big one. <laughs> sure. Because when you talk about One Health, you know, we're trying to improve the health of the wildlife and the people and the livestock, everyone gets confused because they're like, people are used to only, you're either only helping people or you're either only helping animals. And even within the animal world, you're either only helping wildlife or livestock. So when we talk about helping all three it's actually hard to find a donor who gets it and right. can support that particular approach. But we're getting a bit more creative in our fundraising and saying, okay, if it's a human health donor, we're just going to talk about the human health issues. Yes, we're going to talk about how it impacts conservation and wildlife, but the main, you know, we're just getting better at focusing the, the donor requests to what they want. Um, some of the other challenges are... I guess, you know, like in the, in the Gorilla Health Program, we built a Gorilla Research Clinic, which now is expanded. So it's now expanded to a Gorilla Health Center with support from Task Trust. We have now like a permanent building. And we're trying in there to also not only work on looking at fecal samples from gorillas, which we collect on the night nest regularly, but also from people in the neighboring local health centers and the livestock. And the, the people part, sometimes it's hard to to get those samples, but now, recently, we've got permission to do research on people. So we think it's gonna be, make it much better and dynamic, because then we'll be able to really better prevent disease between the people and the gorillas. So I think some of that challenge Very is just people understanding that, you know, you can right. actually analyze everything in one lab and get some good results. So we team up with the what, local health centers just to make sure that we're able to do this integrated work together. And they're coming on board, they're getting more interested even in the wildlife issues, so that's really good. And then uh, we also work with village health teams, which are community-based network which the government has endorsed, where we have volunteers who go and visit people's homes regularly. Each one is in charge of about 50 households, and they carry out a lot of behavior change communication, improving hygiene and sanitation, um, looking out for people who are sick and referring them. They also look at promote family planning and we got into that because we found that people had 10 children. They couldn't give them proper health care. So they, if gorillas go into their gardens, they're more likely to find unhealthy situations, people defecating in the garden, you know, not having pit latrines and all that. So we realized that we needed to also look at family planning. Also because it reduces poverty in the household. And once it does that, then they're less likely to go into the park because they have other alternatives. And so we promote all of that plus alternative livelihoods and 
it's, it's good working with that group, it really is. One of the challenges we had had was how do we sustain them? Because like any most NGO projects, once the donor funding ends, unfortunately it's hard to keep things going. But luckily we've been able to, with their advice, we've been able to give them group income generating projects. So, which they've reinvested into village saving and loan associations, and they're able to continue this public health outreach. They also promote gorilla conservation, forest conservation. So we find that the communities where the volunteers regularly go out to have a very have a positive attitude towards the gorillas and towards the conservation of the park, which is great. And we think just because we're addressing a basic need, which is health, it's changing their attitudes.